I think he was weird. <laughs> well, I sent him to tell you. I, I know. Have the debate now. If you are in conflict with yourself about why we support Israel. Have the debate now. Don't have the debate then. Because when you have the debate then, and you think you know it all, and you meet the master, and you guess who's going to lose the debate? You, left, next, excuse me, I went to synagogue, I was messianic, I went to church, I, I, I tithed, I was baptized. I don't have, look, there's a long line to process here. I don't have all day long. Left, next, get him out of my face. I, I healed in your name, I, I cast demons in your name. Depart from me, I never knew you. Don't be in that situation. It's crucial that if you want to say you love God, that you adhere to what he commanded. Now, he goes on, he says, he shall regard neither the God of his fathers, he doesn't honor the God of his fathers. If he comes from the Eastern Roman Empire, like I said, Turkey, then he does not honor the, gods of, the God of his fathers. His fathers were believers. Turkey was a Christian country. That's one way to look at the interpretation. For he shall exalt himself above them all. But in their place he shall honor a God of what? Fortresses. Can you tell me what's a God of fortresses? Who honors a God of fortresses? War. Who honors a God of war? Who's honoring God of war these days? Oh, the anti-Messiah must be Jew. Why? Well, because Israel will trust the anti-Messiah, the anti-Christ, so how can they trust somebody who's not Jewish and sign a peace treaty? They can't sign a peace treaty with somebody who's not Jewish. Where were you all these years? Have you not seen Oslo? They signed a peace treaty with Yasser Arafat. He honored a god of war. And he was not a Jew. Now, but in their place he shall honor a god of fortresses, a god which his fathers did not know. He shall honor with gold and silver and precious stones. Boy, the five pillars of Islam, one of the pillars of Islam is to send money for the cause of Allah, zakat. Zakat is one of the major pillars in Islam. Osama bin Laden gave his money, how? Saudi Arabia is from the gold and the silver. In Saudi Arabia, wealth is d defined by gold and silver. If you want to know how much people own gold, all the gold of the world is in Saudi Arabia. And you have to give a portion of your gold and your silver to advance the cause of Allah for jihad. It's very clear when Muslims read this. Because you were never Muslim. Every year we had to honor Allah with gold and silver and, and monies. It's part, look up zakat, Z-A-K-A-T, or read it in God's war and terror, it's in detail. Probably God's war and terror is the most detailed compodium that's ever been written on the subject of understanding how much the Bible says about Islam. It's going to take you probably a year to study it. And I made it very interesting. I made it 99 chapters, very small chapters, because I know Americans have no long stamina. <laughs> and then I had it 750 pages. Too much, too much, too much. You have to cut it down. So I had to, to cheat you, and I made the font smaller, 500 pages or 450 pages, just to cheat you into giving you. That's the only way to sell you the book, or else you wouldn't read it, because it's too big. Verse 39, thus he shall act against, look at that, very interesting. Thus he shall act against the strongest fortresses with a foreign god, which he shall acknowledge and advance its glory. If he was an atheist, tell me, how is it that he will acknowledge a god of war and advance its cause, that god's cause, by war? Who's advancing the cause of Allah by war? And what does it mean by a foreign god to you who's Allah? Foreign god. He's speaking to the believers. It's a foreign god he will bring. And he'll be a god of war and he will advance his glory through war. Can it be any clearer than this? One verse sums the whole thing. Then he shall also enter the glories of Edom and Moab and Egypt and Ethiopians, all the Muslim and Libyans, all Muslims, every single reference in the Bible that is mentioned by name regarding countries, it's always Muslims. In fact, even if you go to Revelation, which talks about how 
God will cast the beast and the false prophet into the lake of fire. Do you know, did you know that the Bible tells us in detail who these are by name? And each country by name as they're cast into the pit. It's in Ezekiel 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. It's very clear. And there is Edom and all their multitude into the pit. There is Elam. Elam is what? Iran into the pit. Every single one Muslim country. America is not included. It's not going into the pit. America is not going to get marks of the beast. If America gets the marks of the beast, if every single country on the globe gets the marks of the beast, then how does God judge the nation's sheep from goats? There's no longer sheep nations, they're all goats. So how come you goaticized everybody? You can't. It doesn't work. Sure, all the earth comes against Jerusalem. I can show you many verses in the Bible, tons of them. Alexander's wings hover through the whole earth. The Alexander Empire did not come to Europe, did not include even, you know, any, any part of Europe, right? The Grecian Empire was the 1040 window today. In fact, if you look at the beast described to us in Revelation, it says it has the body of a leopard. The leopard is what? Greece. The Grecian Empire, which doesn't include Europe. Mouth of a lion. Lion is Babylon. Babylon today is Iraq, Arabia. Feet of a bear. The bear is Persia, Iran. In fact, if you look at the statue of Daniel in Daniel 2, the head of gold, chest of silver, belly of bronze, legs, thighs of bronze, you know. Notice the belly and the thighs are of bronze. Two thighs. One of the Grecian empires had two thighs. In other words, Daniel lumped up the Greco-Romano in one. Then came to the iron, he says, that one is different than all the others. If the iron is Rome, then how is the Roman Empire so different than the Grecian? They spoke Greek during the Roman era, even the time of the Messiah. It says it crushes all the others. When did the Roman Empire crush the Persian, the silver, the Parthian? Never happened in history. Only the Islamic Empire crushed all of them. Who conquered Rome, the Roman Empire? Remember, Rome ceased to exist and continued to exist in what we call Byzantium. The eastern parts of the Roman Empire continued to flourish as the Roman Empire. Who conquered Byzantium? And where did it flourish? Where was the Byzantium Roman Empire? Turkey, there you go, there's this gobble gobble sticking out again all the time. And it's mentioned by name in the Bible, Ezekiel 30. Remember, the day of the Lord, the times of the Gentiles in Ezekiel 30. Let's read it again. What happens on the day of the Lord, the times of the Gentiles? Who's God dealing with? Um, Ezekiel. Proverbs, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. There it is. Ezekiel 30. The day of the Lord, verse 5. The day is near, remember verse 3, the day is near, the day of the Lord is near, verse 5. Ethiopia, which is not modern Ethiopia, by the way. Ancient Ethiopia, Kush, was south of Egypt. That's Sudan and Somalia. Who are we dealing with these days? Somalia. And Sudan as well, killed over a million believers. Uh, Libya. Here's Libya by name. Did I make that name? Where's Rome? Where's France? Lydia. Where is Lydia? Speak up. Americans, we forgive you with the geography. It's okay. Leave the geography to us. What we want from the Americans to do is your F-16s and your military strength. <laughs> we'll teach the geography. Lydia is in Turkey. Ludim, Lydia. Turkey, there's Turkey mentioned right there that God's dealing with in the end of times, on the day of the Lord. So, in fact, if you don't believe me, go to Zechariah chapter 9, verses 13 and 14. Zechariah, it's very interesting. Zechariah chapter 9, verses 13 and 14. Look at chapter 9 of Zechariah. Oh, boy. Verse 5, Ashkelon shall see it and fear. Gaza shall be Philistines, all. And then he talks about Turkey, look at it, it says in verse 13. 
For I have bent Judah my bow, fitted the bow with Ephraim, and raised up your scions, O Zion. Is Zion a person? No. Zion is a region, geographic region. That's Israel. Against your sons, O Greece. Is Greece a person? Yavan. No. It's a country. It's a place. It's a region. Yavan, Ionia. I raised your sons, O Israel, to fight against the children of Ionia. Where is Ionia? Turkey. Turkey. See, when you think Greece, when the Bible says Greece, Westerners have a way of interpreting things in a kind of uh, Hollywood fashion. Greece. That's Zorba. Athens. Did you say dance? Come on, my boy. Ding, ding, ding. Stop it with that kind of thinking. It's not Greece, Athens, Cyprus. No. Ionia is in Turkey. Greece is what it's talking about is Turkey. Okay. Some people say, well, you know, it has to be the Roman Empire. It must be from Europe. Did you know every prophecy about a coming epidemic? Let's take Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus, right? Antiochus. Remember the story of Antiochus, the Greek? He came. It's prophesied in Daniel that he will come to destroy the temple. And he will, you know, defile the temple. Sorry. Remember? He defiled the temple. And it told us, he, it mentioned him as the little horn from the Grecian Empire. If you were there at those days, you would be reading this. You go, okay, he must be Zorba. He must be coming from Athens or Cyprus. Where did Antiochus come from? Syria. There you have it. It's not what you think. It's what God thinks. He usually thinks opposite than what you think. If you say horse, he says donkey. He hangs on a tree. Can you imagine if I came to you? Right now you're in a synagogue in Jerusalem. And I walked in from Bethlehem. I was a shepherd. In fact, my grandfather owned the shepherd's fields where the angels came down. I never knew the angels came down on my land to proclaim the coming of the king. And I came to you here at the synagogue and I said, you know all this time we've been waiting for the Messiah? We thought he comes riding on a horse. You know the man that just hanged in the tree outside the city gates? That criminal? That criminal was our Messiah. What would you do? You would also crucify me as well. In other words, the way the world will be, including the church... The same way as it used to be then. If you think they were so bad that they could not recognize the first coming, don't kid yourself. The church will be also as bad as recognizing the second coming. And many in the church will say, peace, peace. Let's have peace. Let's go copulate with the Antichrist. They will sleep with that harlot. Oh, Walid uses bad language. So does God. He calls it whore of Babylon. That's nothing but a whore, he calls it. And that whore comes out of that desert. Why? Why when the Messiah was asked the question, tell us, how will you come? What did he say the first thing? Beware. Do not be deceived. His first instruction, don't be deceived. Deception will be the theme of the day. Okay, so the first warning, don't be deceived. We must understand deception then. Second, when they tell you he comes from the desert, do not believe it. Not from Rome, not from lush land, from the desert. He comes from the desert. The desert is always Arabia. Don't believe it. When he tells you, they tell you he's in the inner court. He sits in the temple, don't believe it. The woman... Riding the beast, the harlot. He tells him, Yohanan, why do you wonder? John, why do you wonder? I will tell you who the woman is. The woman is a city in a desert. He took me to the desert. 